Again, you're now under the sounds of your brother, Kahan Tyler Dark, coming at you through the spirit of righteousness and truth. First of all, I would like to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, um, for actually blessing me with this message, and hopefully you will actually detach your emotions, and this message was will actually awaken a lot of the men out there in Yasha Allah in the nation of Israel um, and you will receive this message because time and again I'm being questioned by a lot of unlearned Israelites um, or just misguided Israelites and even if you may have actually been misguided by your your deacon, your elder, uh, whatever you may refer to him as, your school, your camp Many of you are asking, Taza Dot, why are you in so many videos prophesying or praying with your head covered? And the reason that I'm doing this is because, according to the mis Mispah, this is what was actually practiced, you know, um, in ancient Israel. So I'm going to prove through the Spirit, and I, again, giving all praises to, you know, to the Spirit, um, and the power, Yahweh, for blessing me, for being able to deliver this message to Israel. And I pray that many of you could actually push your pride aside and receive this message from the spirit from which it is given instead of the spirit of, you know, slumber where your mind is closed off and you are actually taking this as an attack instead of edification and rebuke, righteous rebuke. So, as far as the headdress is concerned, you know, the head covering of men that's actually worn with the priestly garments. First of all, I am a Kahan of the Most High. I'm not your typical Hebrew. I keep telling you that. I'm not your ordinary Hebrew. I'm not a follower. I follow the Most High. I do not follow men. I research Check it out. Research. Check it out. And then, I have my answer. I don't follow me. And anything that I tell you, I always encourage you to go and check it out for yourself. In fact, don't believe me on this. Go and check it out for yourself. Then you'll understand why I pray or prophesy with my head covered because I am a priest of the Most High. I am not your typical Hebrew. I'm not your ordinary Hebrew. Now, when we look at the priesthood from Aaron, the high priest wore a mitri on his head. That's, that's Bible. That's Torah. You cannot dispute that. You cannot refute that with your misunderstanding or your misinterpretations of Paul's letters. When Paul was stating that a man should not pray or prophesy with his head covered. He's talking about your ordinary man. I am not your typical Hebrew. I am a Kahan of the Most High. Understand that. Understand that. So if you are a priestly man, if you are a Kahan, when you prophesy and when you go before the Most High, you should have your head covered. And I'm going to prove that with scriptures. That's indisputable, that's irrefutable. And any man that's teaching you otherwise, he's not teaching the truth. He's not teaching you the truth. So a headdress is one of the scarce garments of the priestly attire. So the high priest wore a mitri, which was actually designated to be worn and made out of actually fine linen and they also wear the zitzits. you see me with my zitzits on sometimes even though I have 
fringes on my garment. You have many Israelite camps that teach that the zit zits are off. But it can be found in scripture. And I'm not, I'm not attacking Israelites. I'm trying to make sure the truth gets out. And, you know, and the priests that actually wore the Mitri, they wear a little piece of gold hanging down in front of it. You see, some of you see the mighty Hebrew wear that, and many of you probably do not understand why he has that little piece of gold dangling down in front of his um, Mitri. And I'll explain that as we go on. Um, and on that little piece of gold, it was actually inscribed holiness to the Lord. This was actually fastened by means of a purple cord that actually hung down according to the book of Exodus, the 28th chapter, verse 4. And then it picks up on it again in verse 39. In Exodus chapter 39, 31. So Dimitri of the ordinary priest was somewhat different than that of the high priest, the Midbar. So, but the term that is actually found usually only in plural in the Torah, Mikbah. So these Mitris was actually worn um, by the high priest and the ordinary priest. And the ordinary priest, when you look in the... Um, Bible in the English word it used the word in the English it used the word body for the ordinary peace priest which is um pa'a pa'a in the Hebrew the pa'a that's what they wore on their heads it's an adjective some claim but it's not it's a noun it's not an adjective it's a noun and it is evident from the expression of the pa'a that these mitris of linen were actually worn by priests. Ezekiel, the 44th chapter, verse 18, makes it plain. So, indeed, the use of the pa'a was actually not restricted to just the priest. It was a covering of distinction of distinction for some of the bridegrooms and for the daughters of Zion, according to Isaiah, the third chapter, verse 20. So, it was also a personal ornament. So, it was actually removed during periods of mourning. When we look at the book of Ezekiel 24 and 17. So, the priestly mitri, these was worn by high priests and priests, by, when you read the King James versions, the lower priests, the regular priests wore what was referred to as bonnets. The high priests wore a mitri. So, these priestly mitris were described in the Bible, yet the name Mesneth, the mitri, which the prophet saw placed on Joshua, the high priest in the book of Zechariah 3, verse 5. Let, let me get that real quick. Let, let, let me see if I could get that real quick. Zechariah 3, verse 5. Let's prove all things because the scriptures say to prove all things. Book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 5. And you can see where your brother, um, Tazadak, carries his, his cover his head when he speaks. You'll see why Nasi Yashavel cover his head when he speaks. You'll see why the mighty Hebrew cover his head when he speaks. And you'll see why other um, priests out there like, you know, um, Hasha cover his head when he speaks because it's Torah, brothers and sisters. And for a man to come along and tell you, oh, you shouldn't cover your head, you do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of the Most High. So the book of, um, Zechariah, third chapter, verse 5. And I said, let them set a fair metri upon their heads. So they set 
a fair mitri upon the head and clothe him with the garments and the angel of the Lord stood by. So as you can see right there, a mitri was actually placed upon their head. Understand that. This is scripture. So many of you are totally misunderstanding Paul's letter. Paul warned you over and again that many things that he write is difficult to understand. If you don't understand something in the writings of Paul, what you need to do is go back to the Torah and the Tanakh. That is the foundation. If you don't understand Torah and Tanakh, then you're not going to understand Paul's writings. Understand that. So, we see that Dimitri was warned. And what is suggested is that it was actually like a turban worn around the head. So the term used to note a mitri of the common priest, a megba, derived from geba, like a cup, like a cup shape. So it suggests a covering shape fitted tightly on the head. Like this is fitted tightly on my head. And the verb, we husbata, from Exodus 29 verse 9, seem to point to the same pa'a. And it may be translate, translated as beautiful bonnet. Let, let me get it for you. Exodus um, 29 verse 9, the proof of effects taking you back to the Torah. Because when you don't understand something in the New Testament, that's exactly what you should do, is go back to the foundation, which is the Torah. Exodus 29, verse 9. And thou shalt gird them with girls, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. So they had coverings on their heads, brothers and sisters. The priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. So Aaron, the high priest, wore a mitra, and his sons wore the bonnet. So the priest's heads were covered. And if you know anything about the, Le the, the Levitical um, priesthood, the priesthood was actually taken away from the Levites. Um, now, pretty much, all of us are supposed to um, study and become priests. Let me get that. Let me get that to prove all things. Um, in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, going into the New Testament, because in 70 AD, the entire priesthood was actually taken away and given to another nation, um, you know, um, so now all Israelites, when we came back into this truth, you know, we could actually study to become priests of the Most High. The book of Matthew 11 verse 12 to give you proper understanding. And from that day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. When it says the kingdom of heaven, it's talking about the nation of Israel. It's talking about the northern tribe. Israel, which was comprised of ten tribes, I'm sorry, the northern kingdom, Israel, which was comprised of ten tribes, and the southern kingdom, Judah, which was comprised of Benjamin and Judah, and about a fourth of Levi. So it suffered violence, and the kingdom was actually taken away from them because it was finally destroyed in 70 A.D. by Esau. So, we read in the um, letters of Paul in the book of Acts 1 and 6. Let me finish this out. Um, Matthew 11, verse 12. And from that day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven su suffered violence, and the violence taken by force. So our priesthood was actually taken away from the Levites. Now you got Edomites calling themselves St. John, St. Luke, St. whoever. You know, they're declaring themselves as saints 
because the kingdom of heaven, which is the nation of Israel, suffered violence and the priesthood was actually taken away. But through the tribe of Judah, the Most High raised Israel back up and let us know who we were. And now you can have priests from all of the tribes. Understand that. So now what? watch this. Watch this. Let me get the book of Acts 1 verse 6 to, uh, to clear this up. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. And when therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So that's the kingdom of heaven that suffered violence. It was the kingdom of Israel. So we see that the priest, the high priest, and the sons of Aaron, the regular priest, covered their head. When they were praying and prophesying. When they went into the sanctuary before the Most High. So to all of you that's asking me, Tyler Dot, where do you cover your head? This is why. Because this is Torah. This is Tanakh. This is the law. Misfit. Understand that. So. It seems to be pointing out the same thing. And what we read could be actually translated as a beautiful bonnet. Pa'ah. Worn by the priest. So, there is no way around it. So, in regards to Tata Da and other men that is priests covering their head, they're right on line with the scriptures and the Levitical priesthood. Because they covered their head. They were commanded. Not just voluntary. They was commanded to have linen bonnets on their heads. When they went in the sanctuary. And the temple before the most high. Understand that. The book of Ezekiel. 44 verse 15 through 19. To prove all things. The scriptures say to prove all things. But the priests of Levites. Remember, the Levitical priesthood was actually taken away. I just gave you that in the book of Matthew 11, verse 12. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, meaning the nation of Israel suffered violence because Esau came in and he destroyed us. He, the temple was finally destroyed a second time in 7 AD. That's what Hamashiach prophesied in Luke 21, 24. So... Ezekiel 44, 15 through 19. But the priests, the Levites, and the sons of Zadok, of Tazadok, and the Lashawam Hakadash, Zadok, that kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. See, they went astray. They shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord Yahweh. Verse 16, they shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and they shall keep my charge. See, this is, this is why the Levitical priesthood was never given land. This is why tithes was given to the Levitical priesthood because their job was to make sure the nation of Israel stayed under the law. Verse 17, and it came to pass that when they entered into the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them, while they minister in the gates in the inner court with them. Why? They didn't want wool on them because they did not want them sweating when they was prophesying to the Most High. They wanted them clean. Verse 18. They shall have linen bonnets. Pa'ah. Pa'ah. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads. So the priests cover their heads. So why are you unlearned Israelites out there saying, Tell the dog, where's your head covered? This is why. This is, this is why. It's Tanakh. And shall have linen breeches upon their loins. Pants. Pants. Des designed for the Levitical priesthood. Not for women to be wearing. For the men. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. See? This is why they wasn't allowed to wear wool in there. They was not to be sweating for the most before the most high to represent purity. Cleanliness. 
and verse 19. And when they go forth in the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments. So we see that when they went into the inner sanctuary before the Most High, they changed their attire and put on linen breeches and linen bonnets upon their heads. But when they went out, they put on their regular garments. Understand that. Understand that. Wherein they minister and lay them in the holy chambers, because it's holy, it's set apart, holy. And they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. So according to the descriptions of the priestly guard, brothers and sisters, in Exodus 28, verse 4, these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, and an ephod, and a robe, and a broided coat, and a meat tree, this is the guard for the high priest, and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest. So the Hebrew word for mystery is mesnifa. It's like an official turban of a king or a high priest. Mitri. Exodus 28 verse 37 says, And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that is upon the Mitri. This is what you see the mighty Hebrew wearing a little piece of gold dangling in front of his face. The priests wore that and they had, you know, an inscription on it. it. It had an inscription on it that said holiness to the Lord. So, you know, many of you, you see the brother wearing it or the priest wearing it, and you don't know where he's even wearing it. But you're quick to condemn brothers, but you do ever not know the scriptures nor the power of Most High. Now, I know many of you have learned this um, in one West, not to cover your head and all of that. And, you know, Praise be the Most High for what the brother, um, Ariah, um, you know, um, Yeshia, you know, all of those brothers back there taught. But if everything was taught not to you, it's not the truth, it is your responsibility to teach the truth. See, I give you right knowledge according to the scriptures. I am not your typical Hebrew. Don't believe me? Go and check all of this out for yourself. Check it out for yourself. So according to what we're reading, should not a priest cover his head when he goes before the Most High? Yes, he should. And I would like to note, not only did the high priest cover their heads, also the sons of Aaron, which was the regular priest, covered their heads according to Exodus 28, verse 40. And for the sons... And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets. There it is, pa'a. Shall thy make for them for glory and for beauty. And the Hebrew word for bonnets is pa'a. An establishment that is actually fancy headdress. A beautiful bonnet. An ornament. Tire. And the Hebrew word for um, head is rush. So the bonnet was for the head. So we could close the book right there. It's that fancy headdress. So again, in my conclusion, this is not attacking anyone. I hope you receive it from the spirit from which it's given. Because it's from the spirit of Yahweh. So I cover my head when I prophesy. And when I pray, because that is what the high priest and the sons of Aaron did. So I could be in the right spirit. I'm not your typical Hebrew that's going to follow what you're following because you're following another man. But I choose to follow the spirit of the Most High. So, you can receive it. To those of you that can receive this, praise be Yahweh. To those of you that cannot receive this, 
then shalom, have a nice day, keep doing what you're doing. But you're not following mitzvah. You're not following Torah. So, you know, um, it was generally considered, considered to be a sign of mourning also when the head and the face was actually covered. When you read 2 Samuel 15 verse 30, and David went up by the accent of Mount Olive and wept. And as he wept and had his head covered, and he went barefoot. And all the people that was with him covered every man his head, and they went up, wept as they went up. So they covered her head in a sign of mourning as well. Are we not in mourning in this man's captivity? Think about it, folks. Study to show thyselves approved. Watch this. Book of Jeremiah 14, verse 3. Proven again, when Israelites wept, they also covered their heads and faces. Book of Jeremiah 14, verse 3. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Why? Because it was ashamed and it was confounded. So that was a sign of covering your head as well. Book of Esther 6, verse 12. And Mordecai came again to kings, the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. Why? Because he was in mourning. Are we not in mourning? Book of Matthew 11, verse 12, said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The nation of Israel, the kingdom of heaven, suffered violence. Are you not in mourning? If you suffered violence? Are we not in captivity? You gotta wake up, brothers and sisters. Get back into the Torah. Uh, I'm not um, anti Hamashiach, but I'm saying you gotta go with the foundation. Your foundation is Torah. If you don't understand something and what you refer to as the New Testament, you need to get back in Torah. You gotta know the law. Let me hit you with something. I'm not your typical Hebrew. The, the Most High has blessed me with the gift of being able to teach many of you our Hebrew sovereign law. I am a layman. So you have a lot of Hebrews and Israelites that don't like me because the Most High has blessed me with an ability to be able to understand law. And I articulate it to some, and some of you don't get it, and then you want to blame me for it. But you've got to study to show thyself approved. Now, you might be a great teacher. You might know scriptures. But you also need to be able to teach your people law. Because everything revolves around law. First is the laws of the Most High. But you need to know the laws of this society in order to be able to move around in it smoothly. So you need to know law. And many of our people are hypocritical. Watch this. There's many of our people that came to me for help. And I, I, I help these people um, more than they know. Drafted up information for them, gave them guidance, and they didn't listen. They want to do it their way instead of doing it the right way that I suggest. So, brother, if you want to become a secure party creditor, I need you to read everything fairly and follow instructions. Some of you cannot follow instructions, so you get it wrong. Then you run to some Edomites. This is how hypocritical you are. Watch this. Talk to a brother a couple days ago. I just bumped because you never know what state you might see me in. I might appear in a city near you out of the blue because I'm always traveling, trying to teach our people, yet still trying to gain more information. So the brother trying to become a SPC, and apparently he didn't file something right. He said, oh, Taz the Dark, they send the documents back to me. Well, what do I care about someone sending something back to me if I sent it with a certified mail tracking number that they received it? If they send it back to me, what do I care about that? Because I have a record 
that I sent this shoe to, to you, and the only thing I needed to do was make a public record. I don't need a de facto government's approval for anything. I'm just making a public record of, hey, I changed my status. I'm no longer under your corporate war jurisdiction. I'm now in my sovereign capacity that the Creator, Yahweh, has given me. And until you can receive that, folks, until you can understand that and understand that and understand that, you're never going to get what you're looking for because you're blocking it with your mind. You do not need government's approval to be sovereign. You are born sovereign. So you change your status back into the original status that you had, and then you're operating from a sovereign capacity. I am not a sovereign citizen. That is an oxymoron. I am born sovereign for my creator, Yahweh. So all of you that's running out here, you know, you're being hypocritical. Instead of coming to your Israelite family and, you know, showing them some support, or you will go to some sovereign filing and all of this, and you're trusting Edomites. Stop trusting in oppression. You keep trusting your enemy. Only a fool will allow his enemy to teach you. But our people are like fools. You're trusting in oppression. Stop trusting in oppression. So to all of you, you know, um, and, and I, um, I have tried my best to help many of you, but you keep blocking it with your mind because you rather trust your enemy than to trust your Hebrew brother. So one brother said, yeah, I went to the sovereign filing because they sent my documents back. Well, did you follow the instructions, brother? And if you followed the instructions and you sent the documents to them, certified mail tracking number, what do you care about them sending it back? They just sent it back to you blank, right? Did they tell you anything was wrong with it? No. How can something be wrong when the only thing you're doing is saying, listen, my status has changed. I am no longer an incompetent, incompetent ward of the state. I am competent to manage my own affairs. I can speak for myself. Let me get the book of Psalms. Chapter 62, verse 10. Because too many of our people trust their enemies. You love your enemies. You trust, right now, most of you, despite how many people that I've helped and helped change their lives, most of you if, you, if you do this and you make a mistake, instead of acknowledging your mistake, you know what you do? You'll blame me. You'll blame me. Because you're trusting and oppressing. My soul, wait thou only upon Yahweh. For my expectation is from Him. Book of Psalm 62, verse 5. But you're trusting in oppression. You're trusting your enemies to help you to become a secure party and then you wonder why you got bamboozled. They swindled you. Stop trusting in oppression. Curse be the man that trusteth in man and make his strength. His, you see, you, you, many of you, you're leaning on Esau for a better understanding because you, been, you, you have actually been taught to love Esau so much that you will go against your own brother and against the Most High and trust in Esau. Book of Jeremiah 17 verse 5 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose faith the Lord is. You got to trust in the Most High. You want to become a secure party creditor? You want to get from under a corporate ward jurisdiction? How do you do it? Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Bless! I'm sorry. 
Thus saith the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his own, whose heart departed from the Lord. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 is for those of you that's going to these sovereign filings and all of that, trust in Esau to get you out of something that Esau has put you in. Stop trusting in oppression. Your trust has to be in the Most High. Jeremiah 17 verse 7. Salakia, Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. So we're going to trust him. You're going to trust in the Most High. He made me his instrument. For those of you that want redemption from this oppression. He made his, me his instrument. I'm not your typical Hebrew. He made me capable of understanding the law. He gave me this capacity. So who are you going to trust in? You're going to trust in sovereign fire? You're going to trust in these other Edomites that's leading you astray? Stop trusting in oppression. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 again. Bless be the man that trusteth in the Lord whose hope the Lord is. I am the man that the Most High has raised up to give you this. You want to understand how to become a secured party? Contact me. You can reach me at creditors, debtors, contracts at yahoo.com. You can reach me at Lordship of Israel at gmail.com. We are the disciples of Christ. D-O-C. You need a doc? Contact the disciples of Christ. D-O-C. The book of John 8 verse 31. It tells us who the disciples of Christ is. And I, being a follower, am also a disciple of Christ. D-O-C. Book of John 8, 31. And it reads, Then said Yahweh to those Jews who believe on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. So I, continuing in his word, am the disciple of Christ indeed. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you got some understanding about the head covering now. Um, share the video, like it, and pass it on. So I'm going to say Shalom, Yasha Allah, Kwam Yasha Allah, Kwam Yasha Allah.